We're talking with Bob McKenzie from TSN, our NHL radio insider. We have him on every Monday. So let's talk about the guys that have already made it to the National Hockey League. Ilya Kovalchuk was number one overall his draft year 2001. Is he on the move, or is Atlanta going to make a deal? Well, I think he's. Uh, I think he's likely to be traded. That's where all this seems to be pointing right now. Um, there's, there's a couple of things. That, you know, it looked looked to me for a while like they were going to get something done, especially when Atlanta was playing well. Right. Um, but you know, my understanding is that he's turned down some pretty lucrative long-term deals that would indicate that uh, whatever it's taking to get it done hasn't been done yet. And I don't imagine the obstacle is financial as much as it is the maybe a little bit of perception of instability on the, the ownership, the franchise, those types of things. If Kovalchuk's going to commit to Atlanta long-term, I think he wants Atlanta to be able to commit to him long-term. And nobody can really do that, given the state of flux that the, uh, the ownership is, is in, in in Atlanta. And at the end of the day, it's it's starting to look like, uh, you know, Don Waddell hasn't had an auction per se, but I think he's made it clear to his rival NHL general managers that he's at the talking stage now and he's finding out what he's going to get for Ilya Kovalchuk. Now, he hasn't stopped trying to sign Ilya Kovalchuk, and Ilya Kovalchuk and his agent, Jay Grossman, haven't stopped listening to Don Waddell. But boy, oh boy, it certainly looks as though the auction's about to take place, and there's lots of speculation that Dean Lombardi, Los Angeles Kings, is first in line and, and has been talking extensively with Don Waddell about what it would take. Uh, my guess is uh, Kovalchuk's probably going to want to go to market on July 1st. I don't know if that complicates things for the deal or not. It probably does a little bit because it affects the price that Atlanta could get back for Kovalchuk. If he won't commit long-term to the team that trades for him, then the price is, is fluctuates accordingly, and, uh, and then we'll see. But um, I think L.A. has an interest. I think Philadelphia has an interest. I th- you know, the Rangers are always interested in any big-name player. I think Chicago has an interest. Uh, I think Boston is said to have an interest. There's all these teams that are out there, but the one that's positioned best in terms of cap room, young assets to be able to make a deal, uh, whether it's a rental or a purchase, uh, would probably be the Los Angeles Kings. A lot of those other teams that have interest in Kovalchuk uh, might not have the cap room or the roster spot. If, if it is Los Angeles, uh, Bob, is, is is that a good fit for Los Angeles? Well, Los Angeles is at that stage right now where they've, they've obviously been a rebuilding team for a number of years and haven't been a playoff team. They expect to make the playoffs this year, and they not only expect to make the playoffs but think they've got a team based on the way they played this year that they could actually make some noise, that they could be a contender. Uh, and so now it's time. You know, Dean Lombardi's got a very specific way that he builds teams. He did it in San Jose. He's doing it again in Los Angeles. And he's got a bucket full of prospects, to almost too many that he can't use right now. And now it's time for him to start using some of these prospects for immediate help in terms of things that could push him over the top and maybe get him uh, far along the, the path and the, the road to the Stanley Cup. Um, whether it's the right, the, the right player at the right time, he'll figure that out. But uh, that's the type of thing they're looking for is, is somebody that can help to put them over the top and, uh, and that. But he's got to weigh a lot of things in that whole issue of how much you give up for a rental, especially if Kovalchuk walks at the end of the, at the, at the, end of the exercise and goes to free agency, goes to market on July 1. Um, Lombardi's got to make sure he doesn't leave the cupboard bare because I think in a perfect world he doesn't mind giving up a bucket full of prospects um, and he's got them, and guys like Thomas Hickey and Colton Tubert and Vyacheslav Voinov. Right. Uh, I think Froloff is a is a, an extra piece of the puzzle in L.A. that they don't necessarily need. Um, so there's there's lots of chips for him to play, but he doesn't want to play all his chips in a rental situation and have Kovalchuk walk at the end of the year and uh, and have nothing to show for it. So I'm, I'm sure that most of these teams that are going to talk to Don Waddell and the Atlanta Thrashers about Kovalchuk are also going to want permission to talk to Jay Grossman and see if they can't do a long-term deal. Yeah, and a bit of a follow-up, uh, Bob, I'd ask you, of recent time, when has a big splash move like this at the trade di- deadline actually worked? When you bring in a big personality and uh, as a L.A., for an example, would Kovalchuk even, would he, is that a cup for Kovalchuk if he, or for L.A.? It's just that is a big move. Uh, well, there's no anybody. guarantees at all, David, none, none whatsoever, right. um, even for the really good teams. And, right. and, and L.A. is a good team, but they haven't been there for a long time either. You know, if you look at the, 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 the sort of the timeline for a lot of teams that end up winning the Stanley Cup, they usually have to go through some growing pains, right. and those growing pains are often a surprise exit in the first or second round of the playoffs. 
And as, as good as the Chicago Blackhawks were last year, they, they didn't get all the way. Um, there have been lots of teams that in the past, uh, as you know only too well, you know, what was the Islander history? What was the Edmonton Oilers history? Before these teams could become dynasties, they had to have some Absolutely. pain and suffering in the playoffs. And, <laughs> and, they, and they got it, and, and it made them better and more resilient. And, and, that, and I suppose it's a little bit different now. A, we don't have dynasties, and B, in the salary cap world, you, sometimes your window of opportunity to win might only be two or three years right. with, a, with a group of players before you have to start divesting yourself of your talent but um, you know, there's no guarantees whatsoever and I think Dean Lombardi he's been around the block he knows that and so do all the other general managers right. and that weighs into the price that they are willing to pay and for Atlanta that weighs into you know they can't let him go for nothing they, they can't just hold on to Ilya Kovalchuk and have him walk at the end of the year and get absolutely nothing in return but they, they probably can be a little bit concerned too about how much they might get back for him uh, if he's not prepared to sign a long term deal with somebody and just go strictly as a rental. 